The girl wakes up in a room, and the woman sitting next to her starts asking her questions, but she can't even name herself, so she acts anxiously and aggressively. She is calmed down with an injection, and the girl falls asleep again. Waking up at night, she explores the room in an attempt to escape from the house, she manages to open the door, but stepping outside she finds herself in a huge hangar and her home is just a part of the fenced space of a large laboratory walking around the place the girl finds a strange device in the shape of a bathtub filled with pink liquid, the scientist appearing behind her explains that she was created printed in a special printer. Scientists have developed a new technology for dimensional printing, and she is the first sample, the frightened girl, starts to run its 2052 Lucy lives, and works on a fruit farm, and everything is going well for her, except she is often visited by strange visions of a bloody knife, and she is troubled by a photograph of a child that she took with her during the escape. During the escape, the woman meets a local farmer, Jack, who has a deaf-mute daughter, Charlie. Jack used to serve as a military doctor and often asks Lucy about her past, but she can't remember anything and explains it as a childhood trauma. One night she dreams again of the strange dream with the knife and blood, and the woman decides to sketch the recurring plot. In the morning, she goes to work in the orchard, and while repairing a machine, she suddenly sees herself in a bathtub with red liquid. Lucy loses her vigilance and is accidentally hit by a car. Lucy is taken to the hospital, and a full examination of her body is conducted, but the doctors find nothing alarming. Lucy asks if she could find out whether she had a child, which causes confusion, but then Jack arrives and takes her home. Lucy's data immediately goes to Dr. Kira's phone, after which a man goes to the hospital and learns Lucy's address. At night, Lucy packs her things. When the man attacks her, he checks her identity using an ultraviolet flashlight from which Lucy learns about an invisible mark on her shoulder. Lucy resists, which is seen by Charlie, from her window. Escaping, Lucy runs into the orchard, and the killer follows her. He stalks the girl among the trees and finally catches her, but when the assassin raises his gun, a shot is heard, and he falls. It turns out that Charlie came to help Lucy. Lucy takes Charlie to the house and asks Jack to leave immediately while she figures out the situation. The girl packs things and takes Jack and Charlie to a safe place, and Lucy herself goes to her friend Craig, who once pulled her off the streets and sheltered her in his center for the homeless, and tells him everything. She also examines the killer's phone and finds the place from where he started his journey at the same time. Two corporate security agents of billionaire Daros come to Dr. Kira to find Lucy, whom they consider dangerous, but she refutes this and asks not to kill the girl. Meanwhile, Lucy arrives at the building, whose address she learned from the killer's phone, and sees a girl, a teenager, whose face seems very familiar to her. She tries to ask questions, but the girl refuses to answer them and runs away. Lucy runs after her, followed by a corporate security agent. Lucy manages to catch up with the girl and takes her away in her car. Craig finds a bound girl in his homeless assistance center, and Lucy explains that this girl is her. At the age of 16, Lucy frees her mouth, names herself Jules, and tells that she lives in a foster family as her parents died in a car accident. She was also there after which she completely lost her memory, to which Lucy tells that they are princes of the same person. Jules refuses to believe this nonsense, but Lucy shows exactly the same scars on their hands, however, the invisible mark on the girl's shoulder is not there. Jules asks to go to the toilet, and Lucy, staying outside, apologizes for scaring the girl, but Jules wounds her with a metal part from the flush tank and runs away. Lucy goes to Jack, and he provides her with medical care. At Jules's home, her relationship with her foster father is quite complicated, but she tells her stepbrother Wes everything that happened to her at the same time. Lucy confesses to Jack that she is an artificial human and takes him to the hangar where she was once created. Much has changed there since then, but there is no one inside. Lucy shows him a photo of Jules, but Jack can't believe that she was printed. Meanwhile, Lucy's words still have an impact, and Jules revisits the photo of her deceased family, trying to remember anything. Her foster mother, Neva, tries to talk to the girl but she is too upset at the same time. Lucy arrives at Neva's office. 
The entrance scanner identifies her as Jules and lets her in, and a message immediately arrives on the woman's phone. She calls security while Lucy finds and searches her office, taking a photograph where the family is captured in front of the clinic building. Lucy returns to Jack, and he admits that he doesn't care if she is real or printed, and Jules calls her grandfather, who tells her where her scar came from, but when the girl ends the call, it turns out that the man is not her real grand. The action shifts to the day Jess regains consciousness after the accident, learning she was in a coma, but the girl remembers red marks on her hands and loses consciousness later shows photographs, but Jules perceives them just as facts. Meeting with a classmate doesn't help either, but one day Jules suddenly remembers walking her dog, which greatly pleases Pam. Soon, a foster family picks up the girl, and now she tries to remember anything and remembers her diary. Meanwhile, Lucy and Jack arrive at the clinic they recognized in the photo, and a nurse tells them that a neuropsychologist with unlimited rights monitored the girl, which is very strange, and also that Al Juz had nightmares related to blood on her hands. Lucy immediately remembers her dream. At this time, Jules is in a chemistry class, and the pink solution she receives triggers some unpleasant memories, but then she is called to the principal, where neuropsychology Pam is waiting, but the girl does not open up and hides the fact that she knows Lucy, but she is very interested in her diary because it does not seem like she wrote it at her request. Wes reads the diary and also notices actions not typical for Joe's, and then the girl notices a strange and quite poetic statement. She types it into the search bar and immediately finds out that it is an excerpt from a book. The page has the address of the writer, and they go there with Wes at the writer's house. Juz shows him the diary, and he admits he wrote it on commission, but refuses to name the client, meanwhile leaving the writers. Jules realizes that Lucy was telling the truth and sending her brother home. He goes to the homeless assistance center. Sometime later, Jules and Lucy discuss the situation and find out the identity of their nightmare with the knife. Jules suggests taking a prohibited substance together, which helps relax and liberate memory. Maybe they can remember something else about that knife, but the substance is at home, and Jules goes to get it at the same time. Dar's corporate security agent advises Kira to find Lucy before them if she wants to protect the girl. Jules goes home for the substances and CONF messes with Wes that she wants to leave home. The brother gives her his sweater and hat, and they exchange phones. This is very wise, as it turns out that her phone has a tracking chip that DS's agents use to track her. Juz makes it to Lucy's house, and together, they take the substance. The girl looks at Lucy's drawings, but doesn't recognize Dr. Kira, but the knife is exactly the same as in her nightmare, and then she gets an idea, and the girls start to paint they sketch everything they remember putting together an image of the entire entire room, from the nightmare it turns out to be a restroom moreover, they both start hearing the same sound later, they discuss their troubling questions, and Lucy admits that it seems she had a child in the morning, Tina sees their joint drawing, and Confidently names the place where the monument depicted in their painting's window stands at this time, Dr. Kira arrives at the trailer where Lucy lived and finds a drawing of a baby on the title page of a book about identity and Jules and Lucy go to the strand named by Tina and find the house. There's a party in the house, so their arrival doesn't raise any questions. The pair goes to the restroom, but it has been remodeled a long time ago. Nevertheless, July manages to find confirmation that this is the place they envision. Later, the party organizers remember the name of the former owner, who is now in a nursing home. The girls go there. At this time, in July's parents' apartment, Neva discovers her absence and forces Wes to tell the truth at the nursing home. Jules and Lucy meet Melissa, who calls them both Eleanor. The nurse immediately informs Dr. Kira about this, which is overheard by Daro's agents. Meanwhile, the girls find a pillow with Jules's image in Melissa's room and realize that she is their biological mother. But while they try to talk to the old lady, agents arrive at the shelter. Lucy orders Jules to run. While she tries to lead the pursuit away from herself, the girl rushes to the elevator where her foster mother meets. She convinces her daughter to trust her and convincingly sprays an agent in the face with a canister, helping the girl escape. 
Lucy runs out into the yard, where Kira's car stops in front of her, and the doctor orders her to get in quickly, if she wants to be saved Kira shows her the drawing of the baby, and drives away right under the agent's noses later, they sit on a bench, and Kira confesses, that she was created out of love the action moves to the past, it's 2030 student Kira is studying at a university, where one of the subjects, is taught by neurobiologist Eleanor Miller, whom she secretly loves the girl is working on. Developing Alzheimer's disease drugs, thinking that nothing would happen in their personal lives she transfers to another laboratory, but at one of the receptions Eleanor finds her and takes her away soon Kira presents her method of printing human internal organs to the world which will allow treating the most severe diseases without waiting for donors after her presentation billionaire Darius offers her funding to develop the project later the couple moves in together and starts living together. Two years later, Dr. Kira manages to bring a printed heart to life and they decide to have a child, but it turns out that Eleanor can't have children, then Kira promises to do it, and soon the couple has a wonderful baby, whom they name Lucas 20 years, past Kira, successfully continues her work, taking transplantology to a new level. At one of the receptions, billionaire Darrow suddenly asks if she can print an entire person, but Kira doesn't even want to talk about this unethical topic. Soon, the women send Lucas to college and are left alone. One day, Eleanor goes to the pool, but soon returns home because she couldn't find her way. It's one of the first signs of Alzheimer's disease. Her mother's memory disappeared at the same age Kira conducts an examination of Eleanor, but there is no hope then she decides to PR brain tissue and with her faithful assistant Josh starts a new project after which she operates on Eleanor Eleanor, comes to her senses, and remembers everything in her life Kira is happy because the operation was successful Eleanor begins to recover, but one night she suddenly dies Kira experiences such terrible grief that she agrees to Daro's proposal to make an exact copy of a person, but she sets a condition she will destroy the printer after completing the work Kira develops a new new lens and asks Josh to keep it a secret because without it the printer is useless the first experiment with a bird is completely successful and Kira creates a copy of young Eleanor she deliberately gave her friend an extra 20 years hoping to find a cure for Alzheimer's during that time then the machine opens and young Eleanor appears from the pink liquid then it turns out that the girl remembers nothing about her past she runs away and takes the name Lucy in the present Lucy can't believe the truth of this story and that she has a son and the tattoo on her arm is the common symbol of their love Lucy asks Kira to imagine what it's like to know nothing about oneself and reminds her that she is not Eleanor. She inquires why Jews were created. This turns out to be a real discovery for Kira because she didn't print any girls and she turned off the printer right after creating Eleanor. This is where the fifth episode ends. Friends, would you like to see the continuation?